So can you tell me about the first time that you had like an incident? First time I had an incident, man. Two, three people got hurt. Dude shot at me. He shot at me. I let it go. And is this still in New York? This fell off it. Okay. I let it go. Right? But you can not let it go, because the street got eyes, man. People see one little weak spot in you, you either dead or gone, man, or you're going to be a sucker the rest of your life, man. They just going to continue to play you because you be going to be the puppy. You know, so in my eyes, I felt good at, at, at that time. I let it go. I was getting a little money. I said, hey, man, look, ain't nothing. And then came back again. I'm sitting in the crib, we doing what we do. Make sure we take that from him. So I left. Everybody sitting up in there at the table. So I got me some cocktails, made some bombs, gasoline in the bottom. Bam! Threw it through the front door. Bam! Threw it through the back door. And stood outside with a pump shotgun. And any damn body, I told my boy, you go around back. Anybody come up, bust their ass. Two people got shot. Now look at the attempted murder charges I got, because I'm burning this damn house up. <laughs> look at that. Damn. All because you want to take something from me. Picking the hottest spots, bro. The hottest spots? And if I do say so myself, <laughs> you're fairly stupendous. Look at that. Look at that booty.
I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is Zach Bozeman. Thank you for tuning in to a real dialogue on Dub City Heartbeat. Good evening, everybody, students, uh, the world, uh, whoever got a voice or eye to listen to what I'm getting ready to say. My name is Ronald Jones. I was born in New Hanover Regional Hospital, Wilmington, North Carolina, right here. Left here when I was a little boy. Went to various different locations up north. Uh, and that's where I was at. And in that point in time, I don't want to really rush this too tough. Um, yeah, so where'd you go? Where'd you go up north? We went to Philadelphia. First okay. out, first out was New York. How old were you then York. when you left the city? I was a little city. boy. I was in Brooklyn. I was in Baby Style, New York. Okay. Yeah. Grew up Red Book Projects. Left there. And we came. Some things that happened when we went to North. Mm -hmm. We got property all up North. You know, I'm, yeah. like I said, my name Ronald Jones. It's a whole lot of us up North. Yeah. And I'm going to give y'all a little something, a true story of a cousin of mine that's never getting out of prison who started the JBM. Mm -hmm. His name is Aaron Jones. And what's the JBM? The JBM is Junior Black Mafia, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And from the 80s and certain parts of the 90s. Wasn't nothing jumping, but it had to come to them, and he's never getting out. He got a book. His book's out on him. Um, true stories, man. People who and stuff, but I don't want to jump to that. Yeah. You know, because I want to stick to me. The way I was brought up Yeah. was like, I took no shorts. You know, I took no shorts. Um, the creed that I was upon that, it was an eye for eye, two for two. Like I say, I'm first resurrection in Islam, in the nation of Islam, through the Iron Gulas Muhammad. We say first resurrection, which is the fruit of Islam, FOIs, right? So I come through this, and I'm still upon that. But I'm Muslim, and I took it and kept going on and on and on and with it. But through me being in the Malcolm era, mm -hmm. coming up in the 60s, I was fortunate to see Malik Shabazz, really? Al Hodge, on my shoulders like this in Harlem. And he gave a speech up that, look it up, y'all might have read it, called The Battle of the Bullet, The Bloodbath Teachings. And with that was upon that. An eye for an eye, a two for a two. I'm not taking shorts from nobody. It is what it is. So it's the... It's the ballot or the bullet. Today our people can see that we're faced with a government conspiracy. This government has failed us. The senators who are filibustering concerning your and my rights, that's the government. Don't say it's southern senators, this is the government. This is the government filibuster. It's not a segregationist filibuster. It's a government filibuster. Any kind of activity that takes place on the floor of the Congress or the Senate, that's the government. Any kind of dilly-dallying, that's the government. Any kind of pussyfooting, that's the government. Any kind of act that's designed to delay or deprive you and me right now of getting full rights, that's the government that's responsible. And any time you find the government involved in a conspiracy to violate the citizenship or the civil rights of a people, then you are wasting your time going to that government expecting redress. Instead, you have to take that government to the world court and accuse it of genocide and all of the other crimes that it is guilty of today. So those of us whose political and economic and social philosophy is black nationalism have become involved in the civil rights struggle. 
We have injected ourselves into the civil rights struggle, and we intend to expand it from the level of civil rights to the level of human rights. As long as you, as long as you fight it on the level of civil rights, you're under Uncle Sam's jurisdiction. You're going to his court expecting him to correct the problem. He created the problem. He's the criminal. You don't take your case to the criminal, you take your criminal to court. Coming off of that, I went to P.S. Five fifty two. You know, P.S. is public schools in New York. Five fifty two. You know about the P.S. Mm -hmm. You you from New York, and I'm right or wrong. You right, right. So this is where I think my life took a change. At. I raised my hand up in the classroom one day. This was, yeah, this is where it took a change at. And I asked the teacher. I said, put my hand up in there like that. I said, excuse me. And I took it into the Bible room. I said, uh, you sitting here telling us about Christopher Columbus. Okay. We went there. So I opened up the Bible. I said, look, I got a question again. You didn't answer what I want you to answer. Mm -hmm. I said, now, this is what I want you to let the class know. And this is how I'm talking to mm -hmm. her because my grandmom teached us in the basement. Yeah. To know thyself. If you don't know yourself, you don't know where you're going, don't know where you have people can do anything to you. I could be the puppet master over you yeah. and have you doing what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to do that. I said, the Bible explains I went into Jesus. I got to stand up, man. I got, I got, I got to give up and get ready to feel some stuff. Now, if you look into the Bible and go grab a Bible, he says his skin was of brass. What's brass? Ain't that brass? Mm -hmm. What's the closest thing to brass? Hmm? Listen to me. Fill me out. I got kicked out of school for this, man. And people was looking me wide-eyed. Now, his skin was of brass. His hair was of wool. Who got woolly hair? Not white people. <laughs> Who got woolly hair? Who got woolly yeah, hair? You paint the picture. Yeah. Eyes of fire. Mm -hmm. I'm saying like, and my, you know, my grandma, man, was, was, was in 1817. Let me, let me do it and bring it back to this. Yeah, that's cool. 1817, I learned, going through that uh, ancestry. Mm -hmm. Did my swab, me and my cousin. Bam, boom, sent it back. Everything came back. My family of Johnsons, I didn't do my mom's side, which is Jones's. But down here, it's so many of us. I'm a Johnson. I'm Ronald Jones Johnson Jr. That's yeah. my whole name. Um, hey, I have, uh, what's from West Africa? The Ivy Coast. That's mm -hmm. West Africa. All around in there. This is West Africa. So we swung through my uncle, Benjamin Bennett. Came here and married my aunt, which was Natalie Bennett, mm -hmm. and had a plantation. You look it up. It's called, I think it's Black River Road or Nigger Road, but it was a plantation that we owned that was taken from us. We ripped and sold cotton. That's how we got here. We didn't work for nobody. Mm -hmm. We had our own cotton. Mm -hmm. I said, God, that's why that's blood in me like this. You feel me? And I'm very independent. I can lean and ask somebody to help me. But I seen that. I said, I told my cousin, I said, stop. We got a big screen, right? We in the office because he do heat and air work. Mm -hmm. uh, Name Chester, Chester Brown, Jamal and all them. Everybody knows so my little cousin. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting there, man, I, it blew my mind, man. I said, well, take it back to Africa again. 
I said, let me see this. I said, damn, look at Guatemala. Look at Monica and them. And I'm looking how all my look, my cousins is built. They built short and stop. I said, man, look at this, man. Wow, they blew my mind, man. Mm -hmm. They blew my mind. I said, man. And I was told that, here we go about this teacher. I was told, they called my mom, said, put him in a time out. He very disrespectful for the fact for me asking a question. And from that point on, I said, hey, I was school. So I took to the streets. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, man, this some made me look at myself different, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like my grandkids, when I can get a chance to speak to them, I let them know, don't settle for nothing right here. That's real low. Yeah. Always think high, baby. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Keep your head up and get what you got to get. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Don't do not become the puppet. Be the master. Get to the streets, man. And I ain't take no shorts, man. My first thing was robbing banks. You know, I was with a squad that we didn't, we was called the MFP. Motherfuck. M. Motherfuck people. Mm -hmm. MFP production. We did, we did DJ Club. We did, uh, we did everything. Off of that name came everything. That was hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was, we were streets, man. Yeah. We did what we do. So. And where you at at this time? This was in Philly. 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 Okay. So, we took to. You man up one way, man. You know, man. You you rob banks, man. You 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 know we do stick up kids, man. That's all West Philly was, man. Stick up kids. West Philly ain't nothing but stick up kids, man. I'm been in banks. I slung paper, which was write checks, you know. Uh, like I say, man, so, so, you have that little part. It's more to it. So, my grandfather was a number writer, street number writer. He said, Look, I'm going to sit you down. I'm going to give you the law of pros and cons of the game out here. He said, Look, you one of my favorite grandsons. It's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. He said, but it's something about you. They call me Petey for Pee Wee. Mm -hmm. That's my nickname, Pee Wee. He said, it's something about you. I said, what you mean, Pop? He said, look, I'm going to show you something. He lifted the mattress. The mattress was cut. Like in the, in the middle of the mattress. Was like if you can roll that mattress, not pick it all up and roll mm -hmm. it. It was slick like this. Yeah. Right? He said, you see that money right there? Huh? That's you. He said, but look, this is what you got to do. He started showing me the pros and cons of the game of running street numbers. So that was my school. My count game is beautiful, man. Anything else, that technology with the phone, I can't work now. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So, but when we come to counting and mm -hmm. getting that money, I can do that. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? I yeah. do that real good. And your grandfather and saw that early on. My grandfather put it in me and said, now look, I'm going to show you a brick. I'm going to show you a loaf of bread. He cut the bread in half and put another hole low. It's your nephew. Son, my grandson, this is what I want you to do. Bring a half a loaf home to me. Or anybody that you around, tell them how to bring a half a loaf home. I said, what you mean? This is what you bring to your house. Let them know you're doing something. So, I was running numbers. I started sticking. I'm still sticking people up, doing what I'm doing. Still ran all up there. Assault charges. Uh, I took to the streets, man, and that was my that that's that that's where I grew up at. That's where I learned to survive, man. You know, to be who I am right to this day, and listening to the things that my grandfather had installed in me. I got it another way, but I got it. My schooling was the streets. That was my college. That was everything I took to. And then I was introduced to be taken from my family. Uh, because like like I said, they said I was a problem child. So I go to, like I told Mickey, who set all this up. I go to Glen Mills, which was a spot in Philip, it's a, it's a, uh, what is Glen Mills? Glen Mills is, um, 
a reform school. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I heard it. Mm -hmm. Still there. Mm -hmm. Play football, baseball, basketball, but my game was boxing. You know, cause you had to fend for yourself. That Glen Mills is. It looked like a big university. It's a big mansion, man, up on hills. Mm -hmm. It's still there. Mm -hmm. And it's a reform school when you're from the state, but it's like private, but it's still a reform school. We played ball, we played over Brook High, we played all them people. Yeah, yeah. You know, the South went to do the uh, South because it goes into another part of it, like a university. Yeah. But it's like a big reform school. You know, like what they call that thing in what in uh Boston, in Boston, uh, West Point. Yeah. It's something like yeah. that. What we know is for people who got in trouble. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get my diploma. I got a GED. Mm -hmm. Right. So I get that to my mom's, like she said, and the whole family is this right here. Bring a half a loaf. Don't bring me the whole. If you can get the whole. It's good. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and I stuck with that, and here I am right here, man, and I made some choices, I had some kids, man, and it took me to, uh, like I said, I got bank robberies, uh, them attempted murders got me like a 25 year sentence, man, where I did 13 and a half years in the penitentiary, man, Baltimore, uh, Philly, New York, uh, Broadway in New Jersey, Broadway, New Jersey, and uh, I, mean, I ain't nervous. I'm starting to feel some stuff. Um, it was right there at Broadway where. I got into this program called the Lifers program. I was around Lifers. Them people wasn't never, brothers wasn't never going nowhere, man. And it was is what it was. And uh, live from Broadway, life. You ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. Broadway prison. Yeah, yeah. You ever heard of? Uh, the Lifers program. Nah, I never Scared heard of it. Scared straight from Broadway. Mm -hmm. Documentaries on HBOs and all that. You look at HBO, you probably see me sitting there with some glasses on, with a goofy on, sitting like this. Always been this side right here. And to that point, this is why I always wanted to start helping people. Because I know John ain't never coming home, right? Mm -hmm. And he my man. I'm talking about my boy. We, we, Cried together, locked down together, 23 and 1 straight together, you know, throwing piss on people, this, that, and the third, doing all the little ignorant shit, man. All because we saying that society fucked us up, you know, to the point where it ain't gonna be nothing for me no more. So when I get your grandbaby, your niece, your nephew, one of them in the prison that I think she, the judge's people, I'm going to beat the shit out of them. I'm going to extort their asses. But I'm, I'm, I still got that bullshit mentality in me, though. To that point, okay. So it took a guy, man, that I know real, man. I don't know if she bass home or what, man. His real name is John Wilson. Old guy might be about. He might be in his late seventies, man. Took me under his wing, man. No bullshit, no punk shit, nothing like that. We, you know, cause I'm in the program, but I go hard too. I, I hit you up and something. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, always been like 190 or something, man. You know, till I got sick. Had a diabetic coma, lost a little weight. But my point of story that really changed me. Hey man, listen, man, this man killed like 12 people. Damn. <laughs> he had a sentence. Check this out, man. Scared straight from the hallway. Get, get it. Pull it up. You might see. Pull it up. Yeah, Pull it up, man. See if you can get Google to give you 
uh, uh, stairs straight from Broadway prison. See if it's on there. Now, he had 600 and something damn years, man. This man, man, I'm talking about, man. Oh, man, help me, man. He told me, good as I was, man. He said, the world waiting on you. I said, well, what you mean? We in a circle. We in a circle, man. And in this circle, right, I can put you in that chair, put him in that chair. I'm still on the same stuff. Put him in the chair, put her, him, put him in the chair, and put you in the middle, or I get in the middle, and we do this round robin. This some good stuff, man, that brings shit out you, man. When you tear a person down, I'm talking about you've already been ripped apart. You rip him all the way here and bring him back up again. Hey, no, you less than shit. You ain't shit, nigga. You ain't shit. You know what I mean? Your clown ass, you know, they cuss at you. They do. I'm in this circle. Put your hands together. Yeah, Pee Wee. Ronald Jones. Not serious. You fast. We got your ass now. You can't run no more. You in this circle. Yeah. That's you. We got you. So put your hands together. See? You one of the ones that got a non-can attitude towards your family, towards yourself, towards any people that come around you because you always wanting what you want to be the self-centered traction of every damn thing around you. But hold up, nah. You ain't responsible. You none of that. You are none of that. And you don't have no honor about yourself. Right? I'm holding back. I don't want to get unless y'all want me to go hard. I'll go hard. I yeah, you go for it. Yeah. So, I'm in the middle of this chair, man. You know, like, you know, use like, give it to him. Damn, I wish I had somebody in that chair. I bought somebody with me. They can take a stern from me. See, I would get up. I was stern. You call you on your stuff. Like, man, look, man. You like have a non-can attitude, man, towards yourself and your family, man. You need to take a look at this. <laughs> I'm saying it because I got genuine can concern for you. Only thing we want to do is help you. We not trying to jump you, rip you apart. We know what go on, this, that, and the third. But you really need to take a look at this. So I don't want to start cussing and stuff. You know, uh, and, you know, it's like you're in the house of self. And your house of self, that's your temple, that's your house, right? You know, you can tear yourself apart. You can go out here and do whatever you want to do. But without having a vision, man, a vision, you know, to, to, to like, this is society ain't do it. You made the choices. Yeah. You did it. You know, I did it. Anything that happened to me while I'm at my life, I'm all right with it, but I made some fucked up choices in my life, man, that cost me relationships. I lost my family, man. I lost my very damn self of being locked down 23 hours a day. That shit hurt. That shit hurt. Because when you look, you in the four-corner wall. Ain't nobody there with you. You might got a rat running through your room. You might feed that. That might become your best damn friend. But guess what? If you are a strong person and you have the ability to endure that right there, can't a damn thing in life touch you. Right. And I mean the shit they putting out here in society can't do nothing to hurt you. Because guess what you want to endure? And master, I can accept the pain and endure what comes upon me. And I'm going to stand up like this. I'm going to stand tall on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to walk that ground. If you don't like the way I walk, fuck you. Straight like that. So you got to be like that, man. You know? And my thing is the gangsters, man. The gangsters, man. That's not gangsters, man. They little boys, man. That that's lost out here, and my biggest thing, like I said, man, I, I want to just help, help.
help people, man. You know, I don't want to hurt nobody no more. Um, like I be telling the uh, what's the name who come up and help me, man. And and this part of my life, man, right now, man. I'm to the point, man, where I just want to go around speaking and helping people. You know, uh, I wanted to give y'all my house, right? Which is pertaining to knowing thyself, self, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I could make this picture of a house. This is the spot where we're from. And it got the chimney, attic, windows there, window there, door there. Basement. And all this is what I was just saying. You got to be accountable, responsible. Accountability, responsibility, and honesty will get you a long way. If you ain't upon that, you can't make it out here. You know, and I look at you 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 you'll be what you you'll be what what, what I call uh caught up in the system, you know, and caught up in the system to where, man, you cannot read, write, and everybody takes advantage of you, where, like I said, my favorite words again, you become a puppet in the world that don't care nothing about you, and if you ain't upon the creed, Standing on some honor, love self, respecting yourself, respecting those around you, respecting the laws of nature, you know, where you don't hurt nothing. I'm not going to kill nothing unless I have to, you know, but uh, just loving humanity, man, and, you know, giving back like you're supposed to, support a cause, man, be upon a movement, man, that that is like free. Free of helping, you know, something that's beautiful, man. You look at it, man, you look at a big butterfly or something, man. You see all colors in this butterfly, man. You know, be upon that, man, you know. That's my humanity, man. <laughs>